to God. We give God praise for another opportunity granted unto us again to bring the word of God to you, our listeners, our followers. And please, if you have not yet joined us, if you have not yet followed our page, Grace Life Komi, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, please, I'd like you to do that today. Take a minute to just do that for us. Amen. Because every day God sends us fresh word and we want to ensure that every one of you are blessed and receive the same word from us as God delivers them to us. Amen. Today is the 11th day of Go Forward Conference and... God has been leading us through through his word. Amen. I believe you've been having a great time, you know, building your spiritual momentum for the year 2022. And um, I trust God that you've been able to get uh, thus far some good word to help you in building the, the spiritual blocks you intend to build for this year for your spiritual life. I'm trusting God that even for the remaining days, today makes it day 11, the remaining days, we have 10 more days to go, you will have a swell time in the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, for as we, as we start up, I want us to have a word of prayer together. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We honor you for such another opportunity you've given unto us to feast at your table, to hear your word, to, 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 to receive light from your word. And to make prayers father we ask so oh lord i take preeminence and for every of the hair so oh lord at this moment i ask so oh lord that you cause us to receive your word with faith and that your word that we hear today shall not only enter us but it shall profit us in the mighty name of jesus thank you for granting unto me all trust thank you for fresh oil be thou exalted mighty god in the mighty name of jesus we have prayed to god be the glory, great things he has done. I want to sing with me. So love in the world that he gave us his son. Who he had himself an atonement for sin. And open the light that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. And give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing to have Jesus. What a blessing to have Jesus. What a blessing to have Jesus. I don't know if you're, you're listening to me wherever you are and you don't know, you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. I think we should take this opportunity to make these prayers together. Uh, now is the right time. Don't wait for later on. Now is the best time to have him. Is all that you need, is all you will ever need in this life and in the life after now. Praise the Lord. So if you'd like to make a prayer with me, please just bow down your head and make this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Today I ask that you receive me and cleanse me by your blood. Make me your own. Cause me to have a relationship with you. Receive me to the family of God. Help me not to walk in my old ways. Make me a new creature in accordance to your word. And help me, Lord, to live the kind of life you want me to live. Make me, O oh Lord, all that I ought, I ought to be in accordance to your plan and your purpose for my life and destiny. Jesus, be my personal Lord and Savior. I welcome you to my heart today. I receive you into my life today. Come and be my own. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Thank you for making these prayers. And my prayer for you today is that you, be, you not only receive the Lord Jesus, but you'll be established in the faith till the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Okay. Um, last week, Monday, on uh, the 6th, we precise of the, go, the commanding uh, the year. Uh, conference uh, we, we I, I taught on the topic strengthening to serve praise the Lord 
strengthen to sell and today we're going to go to the next part of it praise god we got our clue from um the accounts jesus gave on uh, you know those who chose to follow him and then um, we understood that god is not in the business of keeping us in the dark when it comes to following him and serving him praise god and uh, god god wants us to you know make the decision to actually follow him and when you do no looking back praise god because he has made all the you know a summary of your work with him what it's going to be like they are all available. They have all been provided in His Word. So there's nothing dark about following Jesus. There's nothing hidden about following Jesus. Praise God. And uh, today we are going to go, you know, a little further, a little deeper. You've been strengthened to serve because you need strength to serve the Lord Jesus. You can't serve the Lord Jesus in your own, you know, your own skill, your own strength, your own, you know, your own know-how. Praise the Lord because there are a lot of know-hows and DIY is around in our world today, but you can't DIY when it comes to serving Jesus. You have to follow the precepts. You have to follow the guidelines of serving the Lord Jesus. Only then can you really satisfy, you know, serving the Lord Jesus and be well pleasing to the Lord. Okay, I mean, you don't, you can't, satis you can't satisfy God on your own terms. You only satisfy and you're well pleasing to the Lord on His own terms by following His dictates. Amen. Hebrews. Uh, six makes us understand that amen okay so today we're going forward and today our focus is going to be on revelation revelation matthew i'm going to give us some scriptures for our study matthew chapter 4 verse 18 to 25 uh, john chapter 1 35 to 51 john 1 35 to 51 luke 5 1 to 11 and um luke 5 verse 1 to 11, and then Mark chapter 1 from verse 16 to 20. Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. All these scriptures actually are uh, talking about uh, the first disciples or the first set of disciples that Jesus called. And, you know, they give account on how they began to follow Jesus, okay, and how he called them or how they followed him, praise God. So, I mean... They, they rendered it in different ways as it is but they were saying the same thing praise god but for this study today we are going to be focusing on the, the book of john the account of the book of john uh, i'm specific about that one amen so having considered what it really means to follow christ and serve in god's kingdom in the first teaching under this topic it is important we know and understand what it takes to have a right start and the right foundation as we choose or make our choice to follow and serve Jesus this year, 2022. Amen. And even beyond. Okay? So while Matthew, Mark, and Luke gave their account on how Jesus began to select the 12, that is, his disciples, we will be focused on the account given by John. This is because the account reveals what actually empowered, you know, the men who first followed Jesus to straight away and immediately leave their nets, leave their father, okay, and to follow Jesus. You remember last teaching, we had an issue of someone who decided to follow Jesus, and Jesus told him, foxes have, ne uh, have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay. He said, okay, and then he had someone else who he told, follow me, and that one said, oh, permit me to go and bury my father. Okay, another one he called, another one, and that one say, uh, permit me to go and, you know, bid my friends farewell, my family farewell. But we, we're talking about men that their encounter with Jesus made them leave everything straight away. Made them, you know, follow Christ, I mean, abandon their, left their father behind, left the business behind, left the co-workers behind, and whoever it is they hired for the fishing business. They left them behind immediately, straight away, and they followed Jesus. What could have been responsible for that? Praise the Lord. That is what we are going to be considering in today's teaching. Okay? So, like I already gave you the scriptures, Mark 2, chapter 4, verse 20 and uh, 22, Mark 1, 18 and 20, Luke 5 and verse 11. For your study, you read it, and then you see that they, they actually are speaking about the same first set of disciples that Jesus was selecting. Amen. 
Okay, so John chapter 1 verse 36 and 37 says, And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. John the Baptist speaking. On looking on Jesus, he said what? Behold the Lamb of God. See the Lamb of God. Amen. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. They heard him speak, they heard John the Baptist speak, and they followed Jesus. These men were actually the disciples of John the Baptist at the moment, or at the time. Praise God. But at the hearing of, behold the Lamb of God, these two left John the Baptist to do what? Follow Jesus. And then the two disciples followed Jesus. And from these verses, we realize that the first two persons who followed Jesus, actually before the, the ministry of Jesus began to teach and uh, to preach and to heal, these were the three uh, main purposes of the Lord Jesus, to teach, to preach, and to heal. Amen. So these two persons decided to do what? Follow Jesus. Even began, before they began to see, you know, manifestations around him. Unlike in our days today, people tend to, you know, move towards you based on probably chances of getting some things, okay? Chances of possessing some things around you or chances of having fame by being around you or chances of getting, you know, their long-awaited expectations from you. Praise the Lord. Okay, but this was not the case with these two persons that decided to leave John the Baptist to do what? Follow Jesus. At that time, the ministry of Jesus has not begun. From the account, you will notice it was just shortly after the uh, baptism of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so these men did so on the grounds of what they heard about Christ. They heard John the Baptist say, Behold the Lamb of God. And that hearing alone empowered them to do what? Follow the Lord Jesus. These two disciples were Andrew and uh, the second is believed to be John himself because he didn't actually write his name in this, in the account. Amen. Okay. At the time, these disciples, like I said, they were disciples of uh, John the Baptist. Says by reason of their fellowship, okay, by reason of their following John the Baptist, they could differentiate when John the Baptist is speaking from head knowledge. They could differentiate when John the Baptist was speaking from experience, okay, and they could differentiate when he was speaking from revelation. And the normal man couldn't have been able to identify who Jesus, Jesus was. Remember, even in the time that Jesus walked the, the face of the earth, those that actually acknowledge his, his um, you know, his, his, his son, is being the son of God, they were actually those possessed, you know, with spirits. Amen. But for a normal man, okay, to have been able to identify Jesus at that time, it was only through revelation. It was only possible through revelation. Amen. Okay. So, um, in this case, John the Baptist was not speaking out of his head. He was actually speaking through revelation light that he received. John the Baptist could call Jesus the Lamb of God because of the revelation he what? He caught. We, we can get that from John chapter 1, from verse 29 to 34. Amen. On hearing this declaration, these two disciples received the words of God in what? In faith. An apparent acceptance believed that Jesus indeed was a messianic what? Sacrifice. If John the Baptist had said this is the Lamb of God, he definitely made a Lamb of God. Amen. That means walking with John the Baptist, he wasn't one who was given to you know just talking here and there's no it wasn't a flimsy talker or a loose talker praise the lord so if such declaration came out of his mouth his disciples had faith in what he was saying and john the baptist in his days was someone that was so respected that people left the city to go to the wilderness to meet him amen so they 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 they, 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 they took the word with so much faith and they accepted the lord jesus so this first act of accepting jesus was as the Messiah, prepared them to do what? Follow Jesus. They accepted that he was the Lamb of God, and they did what? That, that word they heard propelled faith in them to do what? Follow Jesus. Amen. Remember, faith comes from God. To us, when we hear his word, we've been learning this at the first week of this conference, 
we began learning about faith. Faith comes to from God to us as we keep hearing the words of Christ, as we keep hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 10 and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Okay, so and the faith from God always propels us or move a man to follow Christ after identifying and accepting him as a son of God, the savior of the world. At new birth, it was the faith from God that made us do it, accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and personal savior. And this same faith is what propels us and moves us to do what? Follow Jesus. So it's not possible to be born again. It's not possible to have received, you know, a new life from Christ and you don't want to follow Christ. Then you are not born again. There's no confusion about it. You are either in Christ or out of Christ. You can't be, you can't, you know, release your life to Christ and don't want to follow whom you have released your life to. Are we together? You can't be alive again and don't really want to know what kind of life you have, you know, been begotten into. It's what we're saying. Praise the Lord. So the faith that comes from God that makes us saved is the faith that actually propels us and moves us to do what? Want to know Jesus, want to follow Jesus, want to serve Jesus. Amen. So now Jesus knowing that these two disciples of John were following him, which is Andrew and John, he turned to ask them a very important question. Jesus turned to look at these two men and ask them a very important question, which I believe is a, is a basic and the essential purpose, okay, of why we choose or why we should choose to follow Jesus. Don't follow Jesus for following Jesus' sake. You don't follow Jesus because others are following Jesus. You don't follow Jesus because they have told you the benefits of following Jesus. Praise God. These two, these two disciples didn't wait for John the Baptist to say, ah, this is the Son of God. When you follow the Son of God, there is eternal life. There is mansion in heaven for you. There is this, there is that. There is this, there is that. And then he told them all the goodies, all the goodies, all the goodies of following Jesus. And then he decided, let's follow him. If they have waited, they won't have the opportunity to receive, uh, to, to have had Jesus ask them, why are you following me? Because they will just be like every other one that is waiting for Jesus to come to their city. Are we together? Why are you following me? It's a very important question. What is your purpose for following Jesus? Verse 38 of John chapter 1 says, Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? Why are you following me? What seek ye? I mean, it's just like you walking on the street, and then you just notice that someone has been following you, following your tracks, you know, for, he turns the same way you turn. He, for more than 30 minutes, aren't you going to turn around to ask a question? I mean, it's safety, it's safety precautions to ask. Are you trailing me? Or we're going the same direction. And if going the same direction, exactly where are you going to, you know? That is what you're supposed to do. And so Jesus asked the disciples the same question. Yes, we know he knows all things. But he really needed to know why they are following him. Have they caught a revelation? What is their purpose for following him? Praise God. And this is a very important question we need to ask as professing believers. Following Jesus, we need to provide answer to this same question too. Why am I seeking Jesus? Why am I following Jesus? Exactly why am I serving Jesus? This will form a good basis for you this year and beyond, you know, when it comes to serving the Lord Christ and going all out for the kingdom of God as a believer. Amen. Okay, this question is important because our purpose for following Jesus will determine the extent to which we will serve the Lord Christ. If you are following Jesus for your daily meal, of course, when he provides your meal, then that's all. It stops there. But should that be the reason why you should follow Jesus? Just to be satisfied? Or are you actually following Jesus just to, you know, miss hell and be in heaven? 
What are you why why are you seeking Jesus? Why are you seeking Jesus? These are important questions we need to ask and be true to ourselves. Why are we seeking Jesus? Are we are we serving? Are we following him to be amongst you know some people that you feel are famous and um, if you follow Jesus and they take you along, then you become famous. Why are you following Jesus? Were you told that when you follow Jesus, he's going to build you goodly houses here on earth? And that is the reason why you're following Jesus? Why are you following Jesus? Is it just to be saved from harm? Why are you following Jesus? Why are you following Jesus? We need to ask ourselves, why are we following Jesus? Amen. Okay, so what was the response from these two disciples when Jesus asked them, why seek, what seek ye, excuse me, what seek ye, why are you following? And then, in the same verse, in verse 38 of John chapter 1, the scripture says, they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, It's not just an ordinary teacher, master teachers. In. They gave him, they gave him a higher, you know, respect. Let me let me use that word, you know, that they could that they are, are awarded to uh, John the Baptist. Master, where dwelleth thou? You see, what seek here, and then they, they actually responded with, where dwelleth thou? Why would somebody want to know where you're doing? For good, it could, it could be because of what? Um, wanting to build a relationship with you. People won't just ask you where you, you, you're residing if it's not for, you know, relationship purpose. Probably uh, for, for keeps uh, as official, you know, information or before any transaction. All for relationship purpose. Amen. So this, this, this disciples of John told Jesus the reason why they were seeking him, the reason why they were following him, and the reason was because they wanted to know where he was dwelling. And verse 39 says, he said unto them, come and see. Come and see. Isn't it interesting? I mean, it is so, so glorious that our Lord Jesus wants to reveal himself to us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He never knew this too. I mean, physically speaking, as a man. But their request to know where he was dwelling received a calm and see response. The same way, if you make up your mind to grow deeper in your relationship with the Lord Jesus this year, you are going to receive the same calm and see. The Lord will not hide anything from you. He's not going to hold anything from you. If your desire is to go deeper, if your desire is to know the height, the depth, the breadth of the love of God, the, 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 the knowledge of the degree, the knowledge of the word of God, you are going to receive it if that's your desire for following Jesus. He honors such desires. Jesus honors those that really want to have a relationship with him, who really wants to know him. Why? Are you seeking Jesus? Why are you following Jesus? Many believers today don't they don't really bother if they know anything out of the scriptures. All the 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 the, the, the concern, the master, pastor, just just speak the word of God that you have read or you know, and let my situation just change. I really don't want to bother myself what John says, what Luke says, what Isaiah is saying, or what Psalms is saying. You just read it for me. Come and prophesy it on me and then let me have it. No. You don't you don't gladly the heart of Jesus with such an attitude as a believer. Jesus wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to come and see. Come and see. Amen. So they came and they saw where he dwelt. And the scripture says, and abode with him. That day, for it was about the 10th hour. 
it was about the 10th hour okay it was 4 p.m so close of day so okay let's spend the rest of the day with the lord jesus so you see these men were not just satisfied with behold the lamb of god they went for that to do what follow him and not just following him he sought he, you know he asked them why are you following me and they said we want to go further we actually want to know where you stay where you reside we want to know your dwelling place and why would you want to know the dwelling place of someone for a relationship for a relationship strangers don't just walk into each other's houses praise god Okay, so I want to believe that these disciples have read the, the Psalms, okay? These following Psalms, I wanted to have some experience and feeling, you know, of what the Psalmist was actually saying. That is why they sought the dwelling place of Jesus, because they can't just, we are following because we want to go and know your house. I mean, random people don't do that. But the faith they receive from God propelled them to want to even know more about it. Are we together? And they really want to have an experience of what they've heard about, about the Son of God, what they've heard about the Messiah. You know, the teachings of John the Baptist and, you know, the prophets and the rest of them. They wanted to have their own experience. They wanted to have their own feeling. And that is why they knew that the only way we can have this is to go to his place. We, we just have to find his dwelling place. We just have to make it to his house. Amen. Okay? And these Psalms, uh, uh, we're going to look at two Psalms. Psalm 65 verse 4 and Psalms 84 and verse 4. Psalm 65 verse 4 says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may do what? Dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. You see what the scripture is trying to tell us? It's the same thing Jesus was actually telling his disciples in Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. This is what the psalmist was saying. There's an experience. Blessed is the man whom, do, whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto thee, that he may do or dwell in thy courts. When you dwell in thy court, what happens? You are satisfied with the goodness of his house, even of the holy temple. So these disciples had this scripture probably in their minds, and they were eager to do what? Go to go to his dwelling place, do what? Have a taste of the goodness and the satisfaction of his dwelling place. There is something about the dwelling place. That the Lord Jesus makes available for us. For all of us in Christ Jesus. When you seek to know him. When you seek to want to have a relationship with, you, with him. All this goodness. All this satisfaction. Come along. You can't truly enjoy God. You can't truly enjoy you know, his satisfaction outside of him. And that is what not seeking the kingdom of God first. Not just seeking the kingdom of God, but not seeking the kingdom of God first deprives us from the satisfaction and the goodness of his house. Seeking first the kingdom of God. What the disciples do, they sought him first by following him. And that is why Jesus asked, why, what seekest thou? They sought him first. Are you seeking Jesus first? Or you are seeking the satisfaction and the goodness in his dwelling place? What are you seeking first? Is it the person or the satisfaction and the goodness around you? This is the question we need to be asking ourselves. Amen. Psalm 84 and verse 4 says, Happy are they. Whose resting place is in your house? I'm using the basic uh, Bible in basic English. 
Happy are those whose resting place is in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed, happy are those whose resting place is in your house. When you find your resting place in Jesus, blessedness, joy, unspeakable, happiness in the midst of a turmoil will be your portion. Because the resting place of Jesus knows no ups and downs. The resting place of Jesus knows no what? Turbulence. The same way Jesus could be in the boat and the storm was, was raging and almost, you know, sinking the, the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. That same way you can enjoy rest when you make the resting place of Jesus your priority. Praise the Lord. These disciples didn't just come to see Jesus. They didn't just come to see his dwelling place. The scripture says, and they did what? Abode. They abode with him that day. And from scriptures, we realize that it wasn't just that day, you know. All the disciples of Jesus, I mean, the twelve, stayed with him. They walked together, teaching, preaching, and healing. Praise the Lord. They abode with him. This man had something that was very unusual. All they did was, what all they needed to, you know, kick off that relationship with Jesus was to hear, to receive a revelation. The words you hear this year, the words of God you receive this year, will determine your journey, you know, your move towards God this year. Praise the Lord. And from the study of scriptures, disciples were always on the move with Jesus. Therefore, what we hear from or about Christ Jesus determines our choice to serve and follow him. What you hear about Jesus will determine your choice to serve and follow Jesus this year and beyond. That is why this year you have to make the choice to, to, to actually, you know, See if the words you'll be receiving this year. And to be sincere, words that will make you remain, you know, a seeker of the satisfaction and the goodness instead of the person of Jesus this year. You need to do what? Stay away from them. You need to do what? Draw back from them. They will not help you to actually serve the Lord Christ and follow him the way you ought to. You will not grow spiritually. Amen. And not just that, you know, not just what we hear, we determine our choice to serve Jesus. Our perception of him also determines our encounter with him and in him. Behold the Lamb of God. Wow. This is the Messiah. That means this is the Messiah that the prophets told us about. That we've been hearing. And John the Baptist says is, is, you know, paving the way for him as a foreigner. This is, he was following. This was what the true disciples had in mind when they left their boss to follow a new, a new boss. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and both our perception and of, him, of him and our encounter of him determines if we will stop at come and see or abode level. Did you see how these men following Jesus were graduating? First it was, let's train him. And then when he noticed that they were following him, he asked them, what seek ye? And they asked, where is your dwelling place? Okay? If it was just where is your dwelling place, I could get to the front of my house and say, this is where I reside. Thanks. I hope I hear from you sometimes or I, I hope you come to visit me sometimes and then the relationship stops there but this man did not do that they went further to go in and not just go in for a one for a five minutes day or ten minutes day they are bold they are bold so they move from just the come and see level to a bold level this year abide this year do what 
Abide. God wants us to do what? Abide. You, you need to advance in your relationship. Not the come and see. Come and see is seeking. You know, just you just want to stay at the surface. You just want to be... Uh, they call it being on the same side. Let's not be too in. Let's not be too out. You know, let's let's not be too serious about Jesus. Let's not be too just just be serving, but no, don't be too serious. God wants you to do what abide. Don't just be doing come and see. You have been doing come and see since you became a Christian. Change level to abode level. Abide with Jesus. Amen. Abide with Jesus. God wants us to do what? Abide. Enough of the floating. Enough of the flying here and there. Enough of the, you know, I'm a Christian today. Tomorrow, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm still in Christ. I think I've backslidden. Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm serious, but not very serious. Okay, I think I, I, I used to read my Bible for 15 minutes. Uh, but now I think I'm just, I'm managing to read it for two minutes, you know. Uh, enough of that this year abide abide be more conscious be more be more intentional okay be more be more serious about your work with god about your service in his kingdom praise god and so this takes us to knowing exactly what it means to abide We'll get, we're going to start up, you know, the, knowing about, uh, you know, abiding today and then uh, by God, God's will in next week, we're going to continue. Amen. So what does it mean to abide? The Greek word is the word mino or meno. Amen. And Thea defines it. Thea is a, is a Bible dictionary for those who don't know. Amen. Thea defines it as to remain in reference to a place, that is to sojourn, to tarry, to continue to be present, okay, to be held. So it's not a one time, a touch and go stuff. Abiding is not a touch and go. Amen. Secondly, it means to remain in reference to time, that is to continue to be, not to perish, to last, to endure, of persons, to survive, to live. Amen. Number three, to remain in reference to states or condition. That is, to remain as one, not to become another or different. Me, you, you can't be sh shaking. I think last week we 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 under, we we, we uh, outlined some attributes of birds are foxes. Okay, birds are foxes. Characteristics are not. They don't abide. Those characteristics would not make you abide in Christ. Amen. For those who didn't listen to that teaching, please refer back to the 6th of commanding the year 2022. Amen. And uh, the fourth definition says to wait for or await one. Amen. Okay. So when we look at this definition, to remain in reference to a place, to sojourn, to tarry, to continue to be present, it, it takes us to, you know, it speaks of what? Of Christ as our secret place, as our hiding place. As our green pasture. Praise God. Because of time, I won't be able to read the scriptures. But I want you to keep the scriptures. Psalms 91 verse 1. Okay. And Psalms 23 and verse 2. Christ as our secret place. Christ as our hiding place. Christ as our green pastures. Praise God. It depicts, you know, remaining in a place. When you are in Christ, abide in Christ. Stay on the green pastures he has provided for you. There is no other greener land than in Christ. None other can provide you a greener pasture than Christ. Praise the Lord. Secret and hiding place. Safety is of the Lord. When you are hidden in Christ and Christ is also hidden in God, as the scripture says, no harm, no harm can pull you out to affect you. What cannot affect Christ cannot affect you. Praise the Lord. Remain in the secret and hiding place. Remain in the what? In the green pasture. 
Now, point two, to remain in reference to time, speaks of Christ as what? As everlasting Father. Okay, he continues to be. He is lasting. He's, he endures. Christ as our everlasting Father, who gave and shared his life. That life. Everlasting life. That we are all enjoying today as, as a new creatures. Amen. With all who believe in him. Jesus Christ is the one that exists in time and, you know, out of time. Amen. So for eternity, his life endures. Wouldn't you like to remain in this kind of life? So when we say abide, we are saying stay in, you know, stop in Christ today, out of Christ tomorrow, because of one thing or the, or the other, you compromise today, you compromise tomorrow. Abide in Christ. The everlasting life is what you need. The life of Christ is what you need. Amen. Uh, some years back, Pastor Chimney had a very, I mean, great teaching about, you know, the everlasting eternal life, you know, the, comp the, the, the composition, what it actually means and you know what it says and if you can please i want you to go to grace life Comedy podcast and search for the, the teaching you would have a sweat time listening to that teaching you have to stay in christ stay in christ stay in christ. abide in christ amen point three to remain in reference to state or condition it means to remain as one not to become another meaning don't change okay Today you're a Christian, tomorrow they are not sure if you're a Christian. Today you walk in love, tomorrow you, you, your, 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 your love is, is determined by how, you know, people serve, serve you, whatever. Amen. You know, some people say, oh, concerning this matter, I will just move my bond against that suspense and deal with you. Meaning that, let me, I'll come out of Christ. I'll, I'll come to the camp of the devil and make my trouble with you and then when i'm true i'll come back to christ that is not how to abide your abiding means your characteristics remain the same whether hot or cold in good or in bad times may the lord help us in the name of jesus so when we talk about uh, remaining in reference to state or condition it speaks of our union with the body of christ Amen. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't give you uh, scriptures for point two. So you use uh, John 3, 16. Uh, I expect that you know it. And um, so Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Amen. Okay, so it's verse, uh, point three here to remain in reference to state or condition. Speaks of our union with the body of Christ. You see that, um, read John 17 and verse 11. And then it also speaks of our state and condition in Christ as what? The righteousness of God. The only condition you have, the only state you should have, uh, is being the righteousness of God. Not it looks like, it doesn't look like Christ. In Christ, we should look like Christ. If you are not looking like Christ, then you pray and seek Christ to help you. Every area it looks like you are finding it difficult. To, you know, to abide in Christ. Look at them. This month of January, as you engage in your spiritual exercise, in fasting, in prayers, you know, in the study of the word of God, as you prepare the ground for your year, ask yourself these questions. And every area where you're having lapses, do something about it. Make the right prayers. Invest your time. In prayers, invest your time in the study of the word of God and feed yourself rightly. Stock yourself up rightly with the right words. Praise the Lord. And everything that is not making you abide, you know, in Christ by doing what? Remaining in a secret place, by lying down in the green pasture he has created for you, by, you know, recognizing him as the everlasting father and, you know, uh, recognizing and appreciating, valuing the life that he has given unto you, which is the everlasting life. Everything that is not making you enjoy the union of being in the body of Christ, okay, and enjoying the state of and the condition of being the righteousness of God, 
Sit down with Christ. Sit down with God this day. This month. To see that everything that has been stopping you from abiding, they are done away with. Start. It may not be complete this month, but start your journey. Start your journey of abiding. Amen. And the last one, the pigs, you say, wait for, or I wait one. Have it, you know, in your mind. Carry it in your mind. Carry it in your heart that Jesus is coming back again. And you are making, you are preparing. In your waiting, you are not folding your hands. In your waiting, you are doing, you are sharing the gospel. You are reaching out. You are telling more people about the Lord Jesus. You are winning souls into the kingdom of God. That is how to wait for him. That is how to abide in him. You, you don't abide folding your hands and, and lazing around and sleeping. You abide doing what? Announcing. He's coming back. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. These are ways that will help us to do what? Serve the Lord Christ efficiently and successfully this year and beyond. We must abide. We have to leave the level of come and see. We have to leave the level of he's a miracle worker. He can change my life around. That is the reason why I'm seeking him. That is the reason why I'm following him. We have to leave that level. Abide. Abide. There is more to it. There is more to it. There is more to it. And may that be our portion this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to make this prayer as we call it a closure. We are going to be saying, Dear Abba Father, Please grant me a deeper revelation of Messiah in the mighty name of Jesus. My revelation of Messiah, I want it to grow deeper this year. I want it to grow deeper this year. I don't want to keep skimming the surface. Help me to grow deeper. Help me to grow deeper. Help me to grow deeper. I want to know his depths. I want to know his depths. Lord Jesus, Makata Shila Rabado Shari Anadesh. Ah, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are to Lord. That you cause us to grow deeper. Cause us to have deeper revelation of the Messiah. Cause us to have deeper revelation of your son Jesus Christ. This year, in the mighty name of Jesus, we don't want to serve with hearsay. We don't want to serve and follow Jesus because of what we will get. We want to serve and follow Jesus with a revelation that will make us follow him straight away. That will make us be honest and, 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 and you know, Go all out for him like we have never done in our lives since we came into Christ. Father, Abba, Father, we ask, O Lord, for deeper revelation. Deeper revelation. Deeper revelation to Lord, for, of, of, you know, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, O Lord. Help us, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. This prayer can continue. Don't just leave it to this one minute. I want you to continue praying this prayer. The more you pray it, the more it will come, you know, a life in you, and then you will see it happen in your life. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Uh, tomorrow is another great time. Pastor Chimdi will be available. He will be here for you. Make it a date, and God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.